you for clicking on today's video if you're new here. My name is Erica and this is my service dog Zion. And today's video is going to be the second part. The first part was five things I wish I knew before my open heart surgery. And today is five things I wish I knew before having my mechanical valve replacement. I really wanted to split this up into two videos because there's a lot of things you'll experience with open heart surgery just when you're having a stent placed or something else that's heart related. But having a mechanical valve replacement comes with some unique aspects. And if you've been watching my channel, you might already know some of these. So the first thing that's really important if you're a female and you need to have a valve replacement, specifically in my case, a mitral valve replacement, and that's the risk of future pregnancies or current pregnancies if you're already pregnant, and the dangers that can pose to both the mom and the baby. Now this is a really important one in a mitral valve replacement. There's two options on the table right now, and that is to have a biological valve from a cow or a pig. The biological valve only lasts 10 years, but the perk to it is, is that you can have children on it and you're not on blood thinners. So there's a lot higher chance of successful pregnancy for both the mother and the baby if you have a tissue valve. But you're almost guaranteed to need another surgery to put a new valve in because the tissue valves don't last very long. The second option is a mechanical heart valve. The one I have is made by Onyx, but there's three valves I believe on the market right now. And these are great because right now they're marketed as being lifelong. They say that you really don't need them replaced but they've only been doing heart valve replacements for about 50 years to my knowledge. There's still so much progress being made in this field and so they're still working on a lot of different developments with it but the mechanical valve is supposed to be lifelong so there's less need for reoccurring surgeries but the mitral valve that they currently have is not approved for any blood thinner other than warfarin and you have to be on a blood thinner for the rest of your life. And this is really where it's hard to be a female because you have to make some really tough decisions because once you're on blood thinners and you have this heart valve, the mortality rates of the mom increase and the mortality rates of the fetus increase. And they aren't small numbers. And so it's absolutely something you have to discuss with your doctor, your significant other, and just other members of your family who might have good input on that because having a mechanical mitral valve essentially guarantees that I'm not supposed to have kids. And if I have kids, it's extremely, extremely dangerous. The second thing I didn't fully understand before I had my open heart surgery was that being on those blood thinners for the mechanical valve, it's not just like taking another pill every morning. It keeps your blood from clotting, so that way when your body is trying to fight against the mechanical valve in your heart and it's trying to protect itself because it recognizes there's a foreign body, your body will try to form clotting factor in your heart and it can cause heart attack and stroke and you can have a pulmonary embolism or you could have a deep vein thrombosis. And so it's really important having a mechanical valve that you take blood thinners. Blood thinners mean that if you cut yourself shaving, it's gonna bleed more. If you're a female who has a monthly cycle, you're gonna bleed more. You're gonna get nosebleeds you're gonna have bruising that's unexpected or you're gonna just barely knock into something and get huge bruises. And so it's so important that you have weekly or monthly blood tests depending on where you're at in your progress and your treatment. And you have to monitor your warfarin levels. And it's one of the only blood thinners that you have to monitor so closely 
but it's the only blood thinner that's approved for the mechanical mitral valve. So as for now, for the rest of my life, I'm gonna have to have regular blood tests to check my blood clotting levels. And I'm gonna have to monitor bruising and bleeding and I'm not gonna be able to do certain things that other people can do or that I might have done in the past. So when I'm shaving my legs, I have to be extremely careful. I can't just go quick and be careless because I can really cut myself and I can bleed a lot. The third thing I didn't really understand before I had this surgery was having a mechanical valve meant that I was going to be ticking for the rest of my life. Just like a clock my heart valve makes an audible ticking noise. So I no longer have the lub dub like a normal heart. I sound like a mechanical woman. I am the bionic woman. But this means that when I'm in a quiet elevator with strangers, they hear my heartbeat. When I'm laying down in bed with my service dog, he constantly hears my heartbeat. And this is a benefit for me personally because my service dog does tachycardia alerts. And so now he can hear my valve so much easier and it's so much better for him to be able to alert to my tachycardia. And he does it so much more reliably now. So as with every negative, you just have to find a way to turn it into a positive. The fourth thing that's really hard to wrap your mind around is having to have upkeep surgeries or repeating surgeries. So it's really common when you start replacing things that you're gonna have to have upkeep. And they've only been doing the surgery for about 50 years and they're learning new things all the time. I was looking up the guy who's had a heart valve for the longest. I'll put a little information about him. And he's went through many, many different types of valves. And so being the longest living patient with a heart valve, he's had to have open heart surgery over five times. And so you might think, oh, I'm getting a mechanical valve. It'll last my whole life. But I was only 24 when I got my valve. And so the chances that I'm gonna need another valve before I'm 80 are very, very high. And so that means you're going to have to go through the process all over again of getting cut and healing and going through the whole process. So it's something to keep in mind. But again, there's nothing you can really do about it. So we just have to think modern medicine and be appreciative that we have what we have. Because every day is a blessing. And every day I have on this earth is one more than I was supposed to have. The fifth and final thing I want to talk about having a valve replacement in particular is there are moments when I feel it. And this might sound weird, but when my heart beats really fast, I have intense pain in the middle of my chest. And in my head, I know that's that valve being stressed because it's got so much more blood pumping at such a faster rate and there's just a deep burning in the middle of my chest and I'm even eight months out from surgery and you just have sensations in your chest that you just didn't have before or along my scar line there was nerve damage done and it takes a while for that sensitivity and that pain to go away around your scar and so that was just something I wasn't anticipating and just being able to feel it and hear it and you know, knowing it's there and see my scar, it makes it such a real experience and there's no denying what I've been through. And I know a lot of people are ashamed of their scars or afraid to show their scars, but my scar shows that I'm a warrior and it shows that my body has fought a battle and it has won. And so I'm so thankful for modern medicine. I'm so thankful for a great support system. And I'm so thankful for my service dog because doing it without him would have been a lot more difficult. <laughs>
So thank you guys for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and yesterday's video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know down in the comments, give this video a like, and I can't wait to see you in tomorrow's video. Thank you for watching! Bye-bye!